This video will show how to solve a simple descriptive statistics problem in R. What we have are the maximum wind speeds in meters per second for Hong Kong during a 45-year period. And we want to uh, find the minimum value, the maximum value, things like the mean, the median, maybe the standard deviation. We'd also like to look at a histogram to see basically how these things change year to year. In R, in order to do this, we basically have to enter the data into R and then use built-in functions to solve our problem. To enter the data, let me start down here. This is what you should see when R starts. Um, probably instead of starting down here, it would be better if you went to the window up here and edit and clear console, basically you're still starting, but uh, you have a bigger screen to see what you're doing. In Windows, similar options. Um, I'm going to call my variable w for wind. Here's the w. Here is the assignment operator that we've seen before the combine or concatenate operator, and now I'm going to enter the data one by one. Okay, I could actually go on off the screen, but if I press enter, W is now these nine values. What I want to do now is I want to add to this. It makes it a little easier to see what you've done and to check your entry. So I'm going to put W again, assignment again, and now I'm starting with W. This means what I'm assigning to W is everything I have for W already, plus the new values I'm going to enter. Notice I'm moving my cursor just past the last parenthesis before I press enter. We'll go again. By the way, you might want to think of what would happen if you had to enter this again, or if you wanted to basically solve the same problem again, maybe with some different numbers. Would you have to enter everything all again? And the answer if we do the problem this way is yes. If we do the problem using what's called a script or a document, the answer is no. We'll get to scripts after we finish all of our input. So now we have 37.0. Little comment about the point zeros. Um, everything in R is what's called floating point arithmetic. You don't have to put the point zero. 37 would be fine for this.
Okay, W is now entered. If I want to actually display the values in W, all I have to do is type the name W and press enter. There are my values. Um, over here, you'll see some entries. Whoops, let me get rid of this. Over here, you see um, this number 13. That means that the 63.3 is the 13th value in the vector W. The 37.5 is the 37th value in W. If I wanted to actually sort W, I could actually type SW. So now I've called something called sort WSW. If I wanted to display SW, here it is. It's actually the values of W sorted. Um, what if I wanted a histogram of the data? By the way, um, this is something that happens on my machine. Um, evidently, I'm using some old programs or old pieces of programs here. But uh, we can go on from this point. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to... Um, print out a histogram. The command for histogram in R is just H-I-S-T, and I'll do W. There's a histogram of W. Um, one catch with the R graphs is once you print one, if you try to print another one, it replaces the one you have. In this case, this is the only thing we're going to try to print. Let me just close this and go on. Next thing I'd like is the minimum value of W. M-I-N, W. 25.7. I notice that from the sorted list right up here. And what if I want the maximum value of W? Another. Notice 64.0. Notice it's not printing the point zero, just the 64, just the floating point value, as short as it can print it. Um, what if I wanted to add up all the values in W? No problem. S-U-M-W. 1749.5. Um, the formula for the length or the function for the length of the number of elements in the vector is length. L-E-N-G-T-H of W is 45, which is what we expected. We knew we had 45 values. Um, if I wanted to actually calculate the sum divided by the length, I could um, define something, let me call it EW, is sum of W divided by L-E-N-G-T-H of W. And let's look at its value. I get 38.877778. Ah, but here is the beauty of a program like R which is really a statistics program. There's a built-in function for this arithmetic mean. It's called mean. Let me do mean of W. And lo and behold, I get exactly the same value as I should. If I wanted the middle value, which is the median of W, it happens to be built-in median of W. Um, if I wanted the variance of W, no problem. There's a built-in function for that also. We'll develop a formula in the course, 104.0677. If I take the square root of that, an SQRT is the square root function in R. Square root of the variance of W. I get 10.20136. If I look at SD of W, standard deviation, another built-in function. Okay, now we have a little problem. Let's suppose I told you I was going to give this problem to you on your first quiz. Now, we've already worked everything out. Do you want to do everything all again? And the answer is probably not. So in R, what we would do is create what's called 
a document in the Mac version or a script in the Windows version. On the Mac, you could just do File, and it says New Document. And think of this as a word processing document. In Windows, if you do File, you just do a new script. You can type your commands in one by one. Um, what I actually did, I've prepared this for you. You paste this in and I'll explain what you have. Um, just typed it just like a word processor. Um, notice these number signs. I guess nowadays they'd be called hashtags. These are our comments. They sort of will not be processed by R. At least anything to the right of a number sign on a line will not be processed by R. So you can use it as a comment. Now notice all the commands that I entered in what's called the R console over here are entered here. That doesn't look like they're run yet. The beauty of this is I can actually save this. I'm going to save this file and on my machine I'm going to save it in my directory called R code and I'm going to call it example of R script 2. I already have example of R script, so let me just save it. Whoops, I have to type example right before I save it. Save. Okay, now, once I have this, watch what I can do. Actually, let me clear the screen, like we started. Now watch. I want to enter W again. Now I can select any amount of this and run it from scratch. So let me do this up to sort W on the Mac. Select what you want, and then press Command Return or Command Enter. On Windows, you select what you want to run and then press Control R. Now notice, same thing that we had before. Histogram. Just run that. Same thing that we had before. Let me close it. Um, I can run all the rest at once if I want. Same thing that we had before. Now the beauty of this is this is saved. Um, suppose you get this problem on your first quiz. And you've saved this. You can just retrieve the script. Actually, let's close this. So let's suppose um, you had this particular problem or something where the numbers were just changed a little bit. Let me do File. Let me do Open Document this time. Now you have to find the directory where it's stored. In this case, it's open to that same directory. Example of our script. Here's my script, and I can run any piece of it. And that's how you can use the valuable concept of an R script or document.